A Fish That Fishes Magazine Article by Laverne J. Cambalda, Ph.D. A fish that fishes? Can such a creature really exist? One might be inclined to deny the possibility, but at the risk of being disputatious, the answer is yes. The creature that appears to use rod and lure to capture its prey is known as the anglerfish. One glance at this bizarre fish is enough to confirm that its appearance is abnormal in the extreme. The old saying points out that it takes one to know one, but you do not need to be a fisher to see the resemblance between the anglerfish's projecting spine and a fishing rod. A fleshy nub at the end of the spine resembles a lure. Such a setup often spells catastrophe for the anglerfish's prey. This group includes skatefish, cod, and whiting. An offensive onslaught by an anglerfish is formidable. The angler's head is enormous, with a huge mouth ringed with needle-sharp teeth. If a potential victim succumbs to the incentive of the lure, the contest is almost always over. Any contact with the fishing gear will trigger an immediate, virtually simultaneous bite. This swiftness almost invariably outstrips any defensive actions by the prey. The angler's mouth is cavernous in size. This means that the fish can capture cautious, prudent prey by making a slight swerve in any direction. Sometimes the prey can be twice the angler's own size. There are 200 species of anglerfish. Some can be tiny, measuring under an inch. Others may stretch up to six feet long. Fortunately, boaters who capsize are unlikely to encounter an anglerfish when they hit the water. Anglers are deep-sea residents, living a mile or more below the surface. Scientists agree that thanks to their remote habitat and effective fishing techniques, anglerfish are flourishing. In this respect, they differ from other marine species, many of which are in decline. Some curious differences separate male anglerfish from females. Only the female angler comes equipped with the spine and the fishing lure. Males overall are much smaller than females. In fact, throughout their lives, Males actually decrease in size. A male attaches itself to a female's body, becoming completely dependent on her. One can only imagine the consequences of any insubordination on his part. Ultimately, the male's body dwindles to a mere remnant. He has become merely a fertilizing mechanism for the female. Such is the remarkable world of the anglerfish. Laverne J. Cambalda Ph.D., has been fascinated by marine life since she first saw the ocean. This is her first article for Ocean 7 magazine. Abnormal 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 is an adjective, meaning not usual or not typical. It is abnormal for children to lose their hair suddenly. Or, you might be puzzled by a friend's abnormal reaction to bad news. Now you try abnormal. One more time. Capsize. Capsize. Capsize is a verb, meaning either to turn bottom side up or to upset. Utility vehicles have a tendency to capsize when rounding curves at high speed. Or, an unexpected recession may capsize a carefully worked out marketing strategy. Now you try capsize. One more time. Catastrophe. Catastrophe. Catastrophe is a noun, meaning a large-scale disaster, misfortune, or failure. The loss of his hearing was a personal catastrophe for the composer Beethoven. Or, your parents may insure your home against natural catastrophe. Now you say, catastrophe. Repeat the word. Decrease and decrease. 
Which pronunciation you use depends on how the word is used in a sentence. Let's see how this works. If word for is being used as a verb, meaning to become or make less, it is pronounced decrease. Decrease. During the summer months, local governments often ask citizens to decrease their use of water. Or, a downturn in the economy may cause the ranks of the employed to decrease. Now let's hear you say decrease. And again. The other pronunciation of word for is decrease. Decrease. This pronunciation is used when word for functions as a noun, meaning a lessening. Inflation may cause a decrease in the purchasing power of the dollar. Or, a high rate of infant mortality may slowly cause a decrease in the population. Now you say, decrease. Once more. Let's recap. Word for has two pronunciations. When it's used as a verb, it's pronounced decrease. When it's used as a noun, it's pronounced decrease. Disputatious. Disputatious. Disputatious is an adjective meaning inclined to argue or provoking debate. A friend of yours may be in a decidedly disputatious frame of mind. Or, an irate customer may tend to become overly disputatious. Your turn. Say disputatious. Once again. Evict. Evict. Evict is a verb meaning to force out from a property, eject. Here are a few ways in which evict can be used. Our rental agreement gave the landlord the right to evict us if we damaged the apartment. The ushers had to evict the basketball fans who were sitting in other people's seats at the arena. Now you say evict. Try the word again. Flourish. Flourish. Flourish functions as two parts of speech. It can be used as a verb, meaning to grow or thrive, or to wave in the air. Farmers have found that many crops can flourish without the aid of chemical fertilizers. Or, Flourish can be used as a noun, meaning a dramatic gesture or a fanfare of horns. In Shakespeare's plays, a flourish of trumpets often announces the entrance of a king. Your turn. Say flourish. One more time. Incentive 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 is a noun meaning a reason for doing something or something that stimulates action many corporations offer employees financial incentives to work harder or a personal experience of injustice often provides the incentive for joining a social action group now let's hear you say Incentive. And again. Insubordinate. Insubordinate. Insubordinate is an adjective meaning disobedient or rebellious. Insubordinate prisoners usually find their privileges taken away. Or, an insubordinate deckhand may soon find himself in the brig. Now you say insubordinate. Repeat the word.
legible. Legible. Legible is an adjective meaning easily read. Though faded, the signatures on the original Declaration of Independence are still legible. Or, the inscription on an old tombstone may be so damaged that it is no longer legible. Now it's your turn. Say legible. Once again. Nub. Nub. Nub is a noun, meaning the central point or heart of a matter, or a kernel or lump. Mistaken identity may be at the nub of an intriguing detective story. Or you may hear someone complain that his or her fingers have been worn to a nub by hard work. Now you try nub. Once more. Onslaught. Onslaught. Onslaught is a noun, meaning a violent attack or a sudden rush of something. The infantry may give way before the onslaught of the cavalry, or little can withstand the onslaught of time. Now let's hear you say onslaught. Try the word again. Ordain. Ordain. Ordain is a verb meaning to establish by law, to order, or to appoint. To the ancient Romans, it appeared abundantly evident that the gods had ordained Rome's rise to power. Or, in the old days, people were taught to accept the lot that nature had ordained for them. Now you say, ordain. Repeat the word. Outstrip. Outstrip. Outstrip is a verb meaning to do better than or to exceed. Japanese students continue to outstrip their American counterparts in math and science. Or, a well-maintained used car can sometimes outstrip a new automobile in performance and reliability. Your turn. Say, outstrip. And again. Pervade. Pervade. Pervade is a verb meaning to spread throughout. The smell of chemicals may pervade a science lab, or a sense of doom pervaded the city just before it fell to the enemy. Now you say pervade. Try the word again. Prudent. Prudent. Prudent is an adjective meaning cautious or careful. It is always prudent to warm up before strenuous exercise. Or, money managers are expected to give their clients prudent investment advice. Now it's your turn. Try the word prudent. One more time. Quench. Quench. Quench is a verb, meaning to put out or end. Every kitchen should be equipped with a device for quenching unexpected fires. Or, the hard realities of life can often quench a person's youthful aspirations. Now you say, quench. Repeat the word. Remnant. Remnant. 
Remnant is a noun, meaning a small part remaining behind. Many people use remnants of large carpets as small area rugs. Or, a discredited hero may attempt to salvage the remnants of his reputation. Your turn. Say remnant. Once more. Simultaneous. Simultaneous. Simultaneous is an adjective, meaning happening or existing at the same time. An entire audience may rise to its feet in a simultaneous show of appreciation for a great artist. Or, promoters may arrange for the simultaneous release of a new film and a recording of its soundtrack. Now you say, simultaneous. And again. Swerve. Swerve. Swerve functions as two parts of speech. It can be a verb, meaning to turn aside sharply. A person may never swerve from her or his moral principles. Swerve can also be a noun, meaning a sharp or sudden turn. A person may be fascinated by the graceful swerves and arabesques of Islamic art. Well, you know the drill by now. Say swerve. And again.